What's up everybody, how's it going? So it's no secret that the software engineering industry is going through a very rough time right now. Many companies have laid off software engineers and are continuing to do so. Software developers are really struggling to land jobs right now. But perhaps one subfield of the software engineering industry that is really struggling at this moment is the coding bootcamp industry. That's right, and dare I say that coding boot camps are either going through right now or about to go through an apocalypse, where I think that many coding boot camps are actually going to be shutting down in the near future. So in this video, I want to kind of walk you through all my thoughts on this, what I've been hearing, and I want to answer the question of is it still worth it attending a coding boot camp in 2024 or in 2025? Now, in order to answer this question and to understand what's going on with coding boot camps, why they're going through such a tough time right now, we got to rewind the clock. When did coding boot camps pop up? Well, the very first coding boot camp, I believe, was Dev Boot Camp. That was the name. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. And it popped up around 2012. And then you had the very first movers in the space that popped up right after that, 2013, 2014. And um, as the software engineering demand from companies grew and grew in the mid 2010s, so did the coding boot camp industry. So by the mid 2010s, in like 2016, you had probably around 10 established coding boot camps in the United States. And I would know this because I actually applied to a bunch of coding boot camps in 2016. As many of you know, I had just graduated from college. I hadn't coded before, and I decided I needed to learn to code to accomplish like my goals of entrepreneurship and all that. And so I applied to a bunch of these coding boot camps. I discovered the industry at that point in time. I had never heard of coding boot camps before. I remember at the time there were about three coding boot camps that really stood out as sort of like the premier, you know, creme de la creme coding boot camps at the time. There was a Hack Reactor, App Academy, and Full Stack Academy, which is the one I attended. But there were a few others, like I said, that were very established. And um, these coding boot camps, you know, they had basically, you know, refined their strategy from 2012, 2013, which was offer a 10 to 20 week intensive, immersive, in-person program, teaching you, the student, in a cohort of about 10 to 30 students, how to code teach you how to code from scratch and help you land a job in tech, you know, that's going to be very high paying. And for me, you know, I'm happy to say it worked out. It worked out very well. I attended the coding bootcamp, definitely learned how to code, and then I landed a job at Google. Now, of course, the coding bootcamp had its flaws, and I have, you know, some criticisms that I've shared before and that I'll probably share in this video, but um, overall, it did work for me. You know, I landed that job at Google, which was great, and ever since, I've been running my own company, Algo Expert. By the way, if you're a software engineer who is lucky enough in this market to land a technical interview, you definitely don't want to mess it up, so go check out my company, Algo Expert. We've got the best software engineering interview prep resources out there, go to algoexpert.io and use the promo code CLEM, C-L-E-M, for a discount on the platform. But so what happened after 2016, after I attended my coding boot camp? Well, the demand for software engineers only grew and grew and grew. And you started to have all these sort of success stories from coding boot camps being marketed and advertised. So tons of people learned about them and decided, hey, I should attend a coding boot camp. And they did. And so the coding bootcamp industry grew even more. And you started to get literally like dozens upon dozens upon dozens of new coding bootcamps popping up both in the US and internationally. And with this increased competition came a lot more difficulties for the coding bootcamps because suddenly they had to really differentiate themselves to attract like students, not only good students, but just students in general. Because when you have so many options, and like I said, there were literally like dozens upon dozens of coding boot camps popping up everywhere, you had to differentiate yourself. And you had coding boot camps that were popping up, like I said, like internationally. You had some that were popping up in, in local communities because coding boot camps, like for example, Full Stack Academy in New York, where, where I went, at first they were trying to attract people from all over the United States and even international students. Like at Full Stack, when I, when I went there, in my cohort, there were a handful of international students, people who had relocated from like London and uh, even China, I believe, um, to New York just for those three months. But then once you start having coding boot camps that pop up in London, in China, or that pop up in Denver, Colorado, or in New Orleans, 
then suddenly, you know, it becomes harder for Full Stack Academy in New York to attract people from those cities and tell them, hey, you're going to have to relocate plus pay a giant tuition to attend our coding boot camp. And so with this increased competition, you start to get all these like new things that these coding boot camps have to offer to differentiate themselves, like maybe better tuition prices, meaning lower their tuition prices, or better tuition models, better because these tuition models didn't end up really working. So for example, one of them was the uh, infamous ISA, Income Share Agreement, that was really popularized by uh, Lambda School, which is really kind of like funny because I believe App Academy was the first to actually offer like deferred tuition uh, in 2015. But anyway, Lambda School is a uh, coding bootcamp that many of you have, you have probably heard of. They raised something like insane, like over $250 million uh, to date. And uh, they popularized income share agreements where you only pay a share of your income, you know, in the future once you land your job to pay for the coding bootcamp. But a lot of these tuition models just ended up like really not working. They were effectively like loans that you're giving to people who are not necessarily like credit worthy or to people who might not land a job. And it was just really difficult. Uh, otherwise, like I said, they they reduced tuition prices and they just had to invest heavily in marketing, you know, market, market, market. And so they had really high customer acquisition costs. They still do. And so this created a lot of difficulties for coding boot camps. And this was aside from just like their product and the intrinsic flaws that a coding boot camp product has. And here, you know, like I said, it worked out for me, but there are a lot of valid criticisms criticisms around coding boot camps, like the fact that they don't actually help you that much to land a job. Like they certainly don't guarantee that you will land a job and they don't actually, you know, they can't just magically give you an interview at companies. Some of them do have like company partners, but overall there's still like a lot of uh, difficulty there. And especially in a job market like right now, a lot of students are very like frustrated or they feel let down. The coding bootcamp didn't really live up to its expectations. Also, a lot of coding bootcamps have had criticisms around the quality of their education because they'll hire students from like a graduating cohort to teach the next cohort just to kind of save costs and things like that, which is, uh, you know, not necessarily, doesn't necessarily lead to the best education. It also kind of inflates, um, like artificially inflates their job placement stats if those people are considered to have a job just by working as like teaching assistants there. So all that to say, a lot of criticisms to the coding boot camps. And then on top of that, during the pandemic, every coding boot camp had to basically go remote. Some of them had offered remote coding boot camps as a differentiating factor before, but during the pandemic, they all went that route. And after the pandemic, they kind of stayed that route, or many of them did. And so that led to another criticism of like, well, why am I paying you know $15,000 for a supposedly like immersive program if it's actually only remote? Like, is that actually worth it and all that? And then on top of that, you had even more competition because you had universities that dropped, jumped on the bandwagon. So now I feel like you have every university, like MIT, Northwestern, Berkeley, they're all offering these sort of like, like coding boot, like software engineering boot camps either during the summer or even during like other seasons. And so it's just, it's a very competitive field. You know, if I haven't mentioned the word competitive uh, or competition yet. And particularly because of these incredibly high marketing and customer acquisition costs, coding boot camps have basically not been profitable. Like the grand majority of coding boot camps have never been and still aren't profitable. And uh, not being profitable was fine ish during the, uh, let's call it what it is, the bubble of the 2010s and early 2020s. But now that interest rates have gone through the roof and that funding has completely dried up, and on top of that, the software engineering market is just brutal, and so there's like way less demand for software engineers from companies, and there's way less demand to learn software engineering from students because they're just like scared off of software engineering. It means that like if you're not profitable as a coding boot camp or as any company, and if you have no sort of viable path to profitability, you just can't survive. Like your business model is fundamentally flawed. And you know, from what I've heard, some of these coding boot camps are truly like like burning money, like large sums of money. We're not talking a little, like a lot. And so again, from what I've heard, many coding boot camps will be 
likely shutting down in the near future. Could be as early as like 2024 or in 2025. Many of them will do drastic pivots um, away from their, you know, from like what a coding bootcamp is. And many of them will um, just try to merge with either like universities, which might be the safest bet, or with like bigger players in the space that have access to more resources. And so you might end up with just like a monopoly of like, you know, a few really big coding boot camps that are effectively like kind of like, you know, Phoenix University type institutions, uh, like online programs, you know, that 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 churn out these these courses and these um these boot camp programs. But yeah, like overall, it's just it's it's really rough to operate a coding boot camp right now, and that is why I I am calling it you know the coding boot camp apocalypse. And it really doesn't help that the morale of software engineers, like you know existing software engineers and new prospective software engineers, their morale is so low right now that it's it's really not helping all of this. It's like this sort of you know self fulfilling death spiral within the industry. But so. This begs the question, like, if you are someone who is considering going to a coding boot camp right now, should you? Like, is it still worth it? And here, I'm going to really ask you to put your rational hat on and to uh, really try to differentiate a terrible business model and that business's model or that business model's product. These two things are not actually, like, one and the same. As a perfect example of this, uh, Uber, for the longest time, really seemed like it had like a, a, a non-viable business model. Like it's, it's. I think recently they 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 started to like flip the switch and and became profitable finally, miraculously. But um, for the longest time, they were not profitable with no real viable signs to pro or paths to profitability, despite having a phenomenal product. Right, like Uber was like a revolutionary, awesome product, and yet kind of like terrible business model. They managed to turn it around with like things like Uber Eats and, and other things. But um, overall, like that's, I think the problem with coding boot camps. It's like really good products with some flaws, but very debatable um, uh, business model. And so um, with that said, why am I telling you to differentiate between these two things? Because I do think that the product is still good or can be good. And therefore, I think that attending a coding boot camp can still very well be worth it in 2024 or in 2025 and beyond. And um, here, you know, I firmly believe that software engineering is a field that is here to stay. AI is not going to take away our, our jobs. Uh, it's going to make us more powerful. It's going to make us more productive. And it's going to make us have way more things to build out. And so software engineers are still going to be in demand. And uh, you, you know, if you are really genuinely interested in software engineering and you think that a coding bootcamp would be like a good way to learn it, then by all means, go for it. Now, there are obviously some caveats, like it's not an easy job market right now for software engineers. To be honest, it's not an easy job market for anybody. Like most industries right now are not, you know, it's not like the Dolce Vita for everybody, but it's definitely difficult for software engineers. So you shouldn't go in with the same sort of expectations that people in 2016 might have had, because it, it is going to be difficult or more difficult to land a job. Uh, but that being said, if you're still up for the challenge, yeah, why not go to a coding boot camp? Like at the end of the day, it's going to give you a sort of structured environment where you will learn how to code. And, you know, depending on the one you go to here, you'll have to do your own research. But, um, you know, it'll give you that confidence of you're getting something that is presumably legitimate, that has some level of like credibility. You know, you're getting an actual kind of institution or company uh, behind you that is going to kind of, you know, you know, swing the bat for you, so to speak. And um, you, you won't feel like you're kind of, you know, just getting lost. Like that, that's the problem with like uh, being a self-taught developer. By all means, if you feel like you can do it, go for it. But uh, it's daunting. Like software engineering is daunting, especially when you've never coded in your life. And you know, coding boot camps have a, there's a reason that, you know, they can be nice for some people. Now, of course, if you are scared about the cost, then explore, you know, an online course that will cost a fraction of, of a coding boot camp to see if you actually like coding or if it's, you know, something that, you can actually learn that it's not going to be too difficult for you. And here, I'll shamelessly uh, promote my uh, Learn to Code platform, Programming Expert. Go check it out, programmingexpert.io. It'll cost you a fraction of a fraction of a coding bootcamp. 
You'll learn Python. You'll learn software engineering. See if you like it. And if you do, and if you feel like, hey, you know what, I would still benefit from a coding boot camp, like that's more structured environment, then by all means. But um, yeah, th th that's my thought for 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 coding boot camps. And overall, like, look, if if you if, if you are 18 years old right now, straight out of high school, or if you are 22 years old, straight out of college, or if you're any other age older than that, and you're in a career that you really dislike, and you feel kind of lost in life, you, you, you don't know what you want to do, you don't know what you want to study, or you don't know what career you want to pivot into, all you know is that you want to make good money, or you want to have potential to make good money, you want to have potential to do, you know, fulfilling or satisfying work, and to have a good, like, work environment, a good work life, then if you came to me and asked me, Clement, what is your best piece of advice? What should I do? I would genuinely tell you, go into software engineering. That's it. Like, I would tell you, go into software engineering, and a coding boot camp may very well be a viable path to learn software engineering because it is a viable path. The business model, like if you tell me you want to open a coding boot camp, that I'll probably tell you not to do. But if you want to attend a coding boot camp, yes, I would probably recommend. I would say like if you've given it some good thought, you you think you can afford it and uh, you understand that it's not an easy job market, then by all means go to a coding boot camp. Or, you know, if you're if you're in high school and you want to go to a four-year college, major in computer science or, you know, a STEM field and learn coding. To be honest, I would probably say like major in a field uh, aside from computer science and just learn coding on your own or at a coding boot camp um, because that way you'll have even more like kind of tools in your in your toolkit. But so those are my thoughts on the coding boot camp uh, apocalypse, as I call it, and on whether or not it's uh, worth it to attend a coding boot camp right now. Let me know what you think about them in the comments below. Do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? Don't forget to smash the like button. It would really help me out. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on all other social media platforms if you enjoy the content there. And I will see you in the next video.